Two people could easily fit on the width of a door floating in the ocean. Two, not people. <laughs> oh, hello, chip Pippers. Welcome to Retro Recipes. We were just talking about Titanic and the ending of that movie there. Spoiler. No, oh, yeah, if you haven't seen it. <clears throat> so, speaking of movies, the ending of my last movie, YouTube video, I went over the repair attempt for that Amiga 4000 that was found in a shed and was used to record this footage on the set Ooh. of Titanic. Ooh. But after analysing the computer and that battery leakage, I came to the conclusion that it was unrepairable. Wait, I thought nothing was unrefurbishable. No, that just applies to Atari 800XLs. That's hmm. very specific. Yeah, I know. Uh, I also got a lot of comments from people on A the lot end. of comments? Or two. Uh, from people saying 30 years battery acid would have been an easy fix and they could have done it uh, where I failed. Um, and also for the power supply, well, they said, why didn't you just replace the fuse? Eep, 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 eep. I guess I got confused. Good to see how puns are rubbing off on me. Wait, it's the other way around. Yeah, we just killed the first one. But in all seriousness, there was a reason we didn't change the fuse. With the smell that came out of this, it just smelled like many more components had failed. It's, I can smell it. But as we all know, people on the internet and comments can never be wrong. Mm -hmm. So that's what we're going to do. And in all seriousness, I think I knew when I was wrapping up that video that I would come back to it and try to give it one last stab. Well, not stab. Oh. Um, it's had enough trauma. And yes, there is magic smoke. What and... about magic fire? Yep, there's that too. And also puppy fracture kicking me where it hurts. Welcome to Retro Recipes. Mm -hmm. Oh no, it's okay. I've got another one. You're a good girl, yes. Ow. Oh. 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 Welcome. Excuse me, we're having a moment here. Oh, so our first port of call, <laughs> pardon the pun, um, is to join up with Paul Resendis. Now you might know him as the guy behind the replacement Omega 4000 motherboards that you can buy. And as it happens, he lives a couple of hours from us. And here it is now. <laughs> this thing is amazing. And he signed this one. And if we turn it around, of course, on our Amiga 4000 from Titanic, it was this area here that was so badly corroded by the battery that was in that position. Oh, and by the way, during the life of this product, Paul has used PCB Way to manufacture the PCBs. This is a really complex board. You also have these vias going through to other parts of the board. I think it's four layers in total. As we all know, PCB stands for Paul's Commodore Board. If it doesn't, it really should. He's also a Navy technician, uh, so I couldn't think of anyone better than to repair a Titanic Amiga. So we're going to meet up with him in this very glamorous car park. And I have... think you mean parking lot. Parking lot? Yes. The... Where you park a lot of cars. There was a lot there, yeah. How did... Were you there? No. Oh, I thought it was just me. Anyway, let's hand over to Perifractic now and Paul Resendez. You're going to hand it off to yourself? Yes, there he is now. <laughs> Paul? Howdy, yes. There he is. Good to meet you. Good to meet you. And um, Paul is a bit of an Amiga 4000 guru. Is that going too far? Uh, not a guru. I wouldn't say a guru. Guru meditation? <laughs> sure, why not? <laughs> okay. Let's show you the machine. Sure, let's check it out. So there it is. Okay. Uh, looking at it right now, what's the fault? Dirty. Dirty, exactly. I'm sure it's been sitting for several years. And yeah. We battery. Think, we think about 25 years with, with battery... Uh, leakage. Wow. Um, you saw the video. Yeah. Uh, now, I had a ton of really nice comments. But obviously, you get a couple of people saying, oh, you should have fixed it. That's really easy. Just check the traces. And there's the clock chip. Clock well, chip. John Hurtel is pretty famous as well. Yeah. He, he's pointed out a lot of times you can pull the clock chip circuits off and it'll start up. Right. Um, the yeah. latch chips that are right in that area, the three chips there. Yeah. That's that's a good area to look at as well. There's so, traces under those chips. 
So I'm, I'm kind of old school. I do Commodore 64 stuff. And good with that, but uh, I know my limits. So yeah. surface mount is where I hand things over to the guru. Yeah. Hopefully he won't meditate. Hopefully not. <laughs> Let's see if we can get it to start up. That would be good. Kind of like finding the Titanic and then starting the engine. <laughs> That's not going to happen. Yeah, you never know. <laughs> All right. So we hand it over to Paul and uh, fingers crossed. Hey. So this is me, Perry Fractic, handing back to Perry Fractic in the studio. Wait, why is he driving backwards? Oh, I reversed the clip. <clears throat> Never mind. She's watching. So while Puppy Fractic watches the Titanic footage behind us, uh, I'll show you a little clip while Paul works on hopefully repairing the machine of when I met up with Seb Kajarian. Now he is from the local Commodore users group and he brought over his Amiga 4000 so we could try some other repair attempts. We swapped the ROMs, we swapped the RAM, we swapped the CPU. We used my trusty chip puller to remove the Kickstart ROMs because of course the Amiga 4000 has two of them. It's done a really good job of removing both ends of the chip. <laughs> <laughs> Just not the middle. Uh, I owe you a new chip. Oh, it's okay, it happens. <laughs> Luckily, we have these in the stock room. That could have happened to anyone, but at least we got these lovely earrings for Lady Fractic. Oh, um, I'm, I can't take these out for another year. I just got them done. Uh, we created these lovely earrings for Seb's wife. Oh, uh, we also hooked up the R card plugged into his Amiga to uh, export device. There we go. <laughs> oh, cool. Okay. And managed to get the footage off there and into a MacBook Pro, of all things, which is how you and Puppy Fractic were able to watch it. But unfortunately, our part swapping has not been successful. So in just a second, we'll check back in with Paul and see if that motherboard really was an easy fix. Hi, this is Paul from Acro Classic Computer and Consoles. I wanted to explain a little bit about what I did and you know, unfortunately the machine does not work. Uh, I wasn't able to get it to work. It was just too far gone for it to come back, unfortunately. Uh, there was a battery still in it. It still had its original capacitors and all that had leaked years and years ago, more than likely. And the board was just so corroded that I, I, it just clearly is not worth trying fix, in my opinion. It would never be the same again if, if you fix it. You'd be constantly tracing problems. Um, so what I did was, before of course to test it, is I actually used one of my test power supplies. Uh, I've got a my test bench over here that I used to set up. Excuse the mess of it, but I do have a power supply here that is wired for Amiga use that lets me test pretty much any board that, that I get on. It's It's been quite cleaned up. So we'll move in a little bit closer so you can kind of get an idea of, of some of the damage here that, that I discovered. And of course, zooming in, the, the first bit of damage that you can see is constantly where, where uh, the battery leaks. Uh, this is pretty much the number one killer of these machines. Uh, the battery has been removed, as you can see, but and some of the capacitors have pretty much done, done their damage. Uh, you can see the uh, C192 up there on the top right corner. And if you look at U891, that is a pretty pretty rough chip. It's it's definitely not going to be a good chip. It's going to need to be replaced for sure. Um, if you look down, you can see where the traces have pretty much corroded off, and the the coating on them is showing bare copper. Um, I cleaned up a little bit of that my, just to do some testing and to see how how bad it is. And and there is no almost no continuity between that and further down in most areas. Also, the little holes that you can see. Next to it, uh, for example, there's one right above the two. Those are vias. What those do is they allow signals to transfer from the top side of the board to the bottom and the bottom to the top. Uh, those are completely eaten through, so you would have to actually run a jumper wire through those holes and attach them where they belong in order to get functionality with that as well. And, and again, if you come over here, another big area that you commonly see is uh, you know the clock circuit gets pretty much destroyed. Um, these three chips that you see directly in the middle of the screen um, do a lot with the clock. 
Also, you'll notice the resistors that are below those is completely just eaten up. Uh, and again, you can see the vias is, as well. Uh, if you look into there, there is quite a bit of corrosion. And you can see if I, if I zoom back out again, the corrosion extends all the way over to here. And that is from capacitor leakage and the battery leakage that it had just been sitting for so long. The top half of the board is in pretty decent shape. So uh, the reason that I say there's a value in this board is some of these custom chips, you know, they're very difficult to get. And again, you can see I, I started taking some of the capacitors off and they had just, they had leaked so badly that I decided that I'd, I'd better just stop because there were, there were pads that weren't even connected anymore. I would just touch the capacitors and they were uh, loose on one side where the, the um, in, internals have leaked out so bad that just, damaged the insides down and here's a really good example of that I mean it, it was just horrible underneath that capacitor um, and I use solder tweezers to take these off it, this isn't me twisting them or ripping them off um, when you come over here to my solder equipment you can see what I use and these solder tweezers right here is are, are what I use to pull them off so it's heated evenly on both sides it's very safe and hopefully this helped educate you a little bit on what you need to do before you put something in storage for long term please before you do anything look into it and if you have any questions i'm always here willing to help you out as much as i possibly can i want to thank perry fractic for giving me the opportunity to look at the board and hopefully try to get it done but unfortunately i wasn't able to get it done again well it was worth a try nothing ventured nothing gained but unfortunately that one like the titanic cannot be raised but at least we're no worse off than when we started. I mean, when we got the machine, it wasn't working. And thanks to us, it's still not working. Um, but at least we recovered that footage. My plan B now is to get a new motherboard inside there, not a father board. Yeah. And for that, we turn over to my very good long-term lifelong friend, Marvin Drugsma from Holland. Uh, me and Martin have been Martin. good. Marvin have been very good friends for two days now uh, and I'm delighted that the machine is going to him as its new home and the reason that I'm so happy and that Puppy Fractic is delirious about this is because he is a great member of the community. Not only does he supply products to a1200.net but he's also the owner of the Cygnosis A1200 and well forget about Apollo 13 he owns the NASA Amiga 2000. And we've agreed that he's going to replace our Amiga 4000 motherboard with a working one that he has there, ready for display. Because he's also a good friends with the person that runs the Home Computer Museum in Holland. And he's assured me that the machine is going to be on display there. I felt that was a really great home for this computer, so the whole of the community can enjoy it. He's also going to display it at upcoming conventions, including Amiga 35. Thank you, Val Marvin. What she said. Thank you for your contribution. Uh, but before I ship it to Martin. Marvin. Uh, but before I ship it to Marvin. Maybe you shouldn't ship it at all, you know, the Titanic. Hashtag too soon. Uh, but I think it would be nice to try to replace that fuse in the power supply. Thank you for your contribution again. And <laughs> see if that works. Stay tuned. Trust me, it's a blast. <laughs> Train service people only. Uh, well, thanks for watching, comment below, and what the hell. Well, there is the dust, the movie dust, the stardust. That really is from the set of Titanic, maybe Apollo 13. And as we learned recently, here it is on True Lies. Wow. Oh, this never gets old, apart from the fact that it is quite old. Seems to be some kind of liquid spill around this area here. So let's diffuse this situation. Yeah, that is definitely blown. 
So all I have in stock is this Commodore 64 fuse, so it's time to go shopping. Can you get down from there, please? Okay, we'll just turn it on here and turn it on at the plug. <laughs> okay. Hello, Chip Dippers. Uh, Perifractic from the future here. A couple of weeks after that was filmed, and now that my eyebrows have grown back, let's take another look at what just happened. <laughs> I genuinely, genuinely had no idea that was about to happen. It's lucky I decided to even film just replacing the fuse. Now here's why I think that happened in hindsight. You'll remember the terrible moment when that 120 volt power supply accidentally got 240 volts. Oh, that was interesting. Hear that? It, it bailed out? Yep. Oh, yeah, we just killed the power supply. It's, I can smell it. Oh, man. Because this is a slow burn fuse, I think what happened is it let some of that voltage through and that damaged several of these components. You can see that chip exploded, the resistor, probably capacitors too. But originally when Chris did that, the fuse blew, which stopped those components from actually exploding. And so the rest of the circuit was left, well, like a ticking time bomb. The next time I put power through it with a working fuse, all hell broke loose. <laughs> Well, I think it's fair to say that against my better judgment, I've now tried everything that the commenters suggested to no avail and lots of fail. Uh, but here in the future, I'm pleased to say the machine is back together and it's got its new power supply that Lady Fractic gave it. And it's on its way to Holland where it's going to get that replacement motherboard as well. And now I'll pass you back to Perifractic in the past, sans eyebrows, and he can let you know how he's feeling. I'm scared and confused. Okay, I'm quite relaxed now. Yeah. I'm fine now, fine now. Just put it back together. Pretend that didn't happen. Where's the screw? Oh, there we go. Good as new. Thanks for watching everyone. Uh, subscribe below. And cheerio. At that exact moment, her food comes out. <laughs> Enjoy your food. Don't worry about me being dead. Is your food? Yeah. Can get your food. You're okay. He's a bit camera shy. She's not there. <laughs>